the word of God came to John in the desert. I wonder why Luke thought it was important to tell us where John was when the word of God came to him. The desert. The desert was a special place, a holy place, a sacred space for the Israelites. It was to the desert that Moses led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. It was in the desert that the Israelites experienced the presence and the power and the care and concern of God for them as he nourished them with manna from the sky. It was in the desert that a new covenant was made with God, sealed with the Ten Commandments. It was in the desert that the Israelites wandered for 40 years to repent, to renew, to become the holy people of God. So it seems only appropriate that when the word of God came to John, John was in the desert. And while in the desert, John experienced a quietness, a stillness, a solitude, in which he could reflect on the importance of his relationship with God, not distracted by the cares of society, the community, family, and friends. The desert where John would focus on the magnificence, the power of the God of all creation as he reflected upon the stars in the sky. Although the word of God came to John while he was in the desert, John did not keep the word of God in the desert. As St. Luke tells us, John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Empowered and strengthened by the word of God, John now proclaimed, preached, taught, invited, and challenged the people to a baptism of repentance. Repentance, the Greek word is metanoia, is not being sorry for one's sins. That's contrition. It's important. We need to be contrite. Repentance, metanoia, is transformation. No longer longer giving in to our sinfulness, but becoming more and more like the God who created us, and the God who saved us, and the God who sanctified us. John was calling people to transformation to change, to metanoia. And how would they do this? He quoted the words of the prophet Isaiah. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth. as we prepare to enter the second week of Advent. Our sacred scriptures invite us to find a desert place in our lives, a place where you and I can be freed from the distractions 
of the world of family and friends. It could be here in the church during the day when it's empty for the most part. We can easily come over and quietly sit in the presence of Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament and make this your desert place to prepare the way for the Lord. But it doesn't have to be here in church. It could be in your home. Now, I live by myself, and I have a guest room that's hardly used for guests. But I use it as my desert place. That's why I pray. That's why I reflect. That's why I do my spiritual reading. It's a room that's really not used by, for anything else except that. And of course, when guests show up, I let them have the room. And so maybe you have an, a guest room in your house that, for the most part, stands empty. That can become your desert place. Or the lanai. Or a bench on one of the uh, golf paths. There's lots of golf paths, especially the ones that, that sort of look out over the... Um, what do they call it, the uh, wetlands area? You know. It can be any place that you can just quiet yourself down and listen. Listen for the voice of God to come to us as the word of God came to John. For when the word of God comes to us, what that word will say to us is prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. Those are challenging words. And in the desert, we will find out what are the hills and mountains in our lives that are becoming obstacles to our relationship with God, and therefore our relationship with each other. Is it the mountain of arrogance? I know it all. I can do it all. I'll tell you exactly what you should do. Is it the mountain of prejudice and bigotry and rash judgment? Is it the mountain of anger, of resentment, of wanting to get even, unwillingness to forgive? Are those some of the mountains that you and I have to bring low, level out, because they're becoming an obstacle in our relationship with our God and especially in our relationship with one another? We can only discover that. We can only find that out when we take some time for that desert place to listen and to reflect and to begin the process of metanoia, of transformation. And what are the valleys in our life that need to be filled up and made level? The valley of lack of patience, the valley of apathy, the valley of not wanting to serve and be there for someone else. Each of us need to look into our heart and discover what is lacking in our lives that again becomes an obstacle of our relationship with God and especially with one another. Our readings today call us to be people of joy. 
Sometimes when I look at myself in the mirror, and sometimes when I look out on the congregation, I wonder, are we people of joy? Sometimes we might be joyful in our hearts, but our faces don't show it. They both need to be in sync. And I think that only happens when you and I discover that a lot of the obstacles in our life, the mountains and the valleys, are keeping us from being joyful because they keep us away from the God of joy. And they prevent us from sharing God's joy with one another. And so as we begin this second week of Advent, hopefully each one of us will find some time in our busy schedules for some desert time, some quiet time, some reflective time, so that we can hear God speaking to us, inviting us to metanoia, because he wants us to be a joyful people, a holy people, a people who share that joy and holiness with one another. And when we do, we can, we will transform this world, God's world, into the kingdom, the place he intended it to be.